Silvio Berlusconi was not just a mega-rich businessman who chose to enter politics to gain personal power. He was the man who, in a typically Italian way, changed Italian politics to ensure everything remained the same. Let's go back to the 1990s when a team of investigating magistrates in Milan uncovered a web of bribery and corruption on a hitherto unimaginable scale, involving all the major Italian political parties. Everyone knew there was a certain level of corruption in politics, but the scandal, known as Tangentopoli, or City of Bribes, looked like it would change everything. It revealed, amongst other things, that Italian companies were paying huge bribes to political parties to win government contracts or protect their interests. Leading businessmen were arrested and imprisoned while the magistrates investigated with several committing suicide. At one stage, more than half of the members of the Italian parliament were under formal investigation, with the value of bribes paid by Italian and foreign companies bidding for large government contracts estimated at being several billion dollars. The established political parties were swept away, including the Christian Democrats who had governed Italy via co coalitions continuously since the Second World War, the centre-ish Socialist Party of Bettino Craxi, and the huge Italian Communist Party was rebranded as the Democratic Party of the Left. The general election of 1994 with its new political parties would be unpredictable, but it was widely expected that the coalition of progressive left-of-centre parties who had been less tainted by the bribery scandals would win. I was living in Italy at the time and it was exciting. It felt there was a chance of a genuinely new Italian political system which would allow Italy to prosper free of corruption and vested interests preventing change. This prospect was challenged in January 1994 when Silvio Berlusconi announced the creation of his new right-of-centre political party, Forza Italia, which would ally in the north with the Northern League, who wanted the richer northern regions to break away from Italy, and in the south with the hard-right National Alliance, heirs to the Fascist Party. It was politically brilliant as the separatist Northern League and nationalist National Alliance were fundamentally opposed to each other and would never have formed a coalition together but each were prepared to enter into separate alliances with Forza Italia, and all three elements were new enough not to be tainted by the scandal. They did well enough for Silvio Berlusconi to become Prime Minister, and although his first government only lasted a few months, it was followed by coalitions led by centrist technocrats and the prospects of an electoral landslide victory by the Progressive Coalition in 1994, which could have fundamentally changed Italy, was thwarted. So who was Silvio Berlusconi, and why did he enter politics? It's easy to laugh at Berlusconi's early years as a cruise ship singer and question how he avoided military service or obtained funding to launch his business career. However, in the 1980s he became a property developer, building the so-called Milano Due area in the outskirts of Milan, which, which had its own local TV network. Over the years, Berlusconi added other local TV networks across Italy to the point that if he were legally allowed to join them together, they would form a commercial TV network to challenge the state-owned broadcaster Rai. All he needed was the Italian parliament to pass the necessary law to permit nation nationwide commercial television. His friend, Bettino Craxi of the Socialist Party, did the necessary when Prime Minister in 1984 and issued an emergency decree authorising the creation of a commercial TV network made up of, you guessed it, Berlusconi's local channels and owned by his company Mediaset. Ten years later, Bettino Craxi was at the centre of the Tangentopoli bribery investigations and fled to Tunisia, where he died a few years later, having never faced justice in Italy. It was rumoured that the investigating magistrates were looking at Mediaset and were close to issuing a warrant for Berlusconi's arrest. It wasn't just about the immunity from imprisonment enjoyed by Italian MPs, but about the whole Italian system which had allowed Berlusconi and many businesses to prosper. I can understand Berlusconi wanting to protect his personal interests and those of his companies, which gave employment to tens of thousands of people. Nor is there anything bad about commercial TV networks. What I do find harder to accept is how he allied himself with the separatists and the nationalists to frustrate the work of the magistrates investigating a political system underpinned by bribery and corruption. He cynically accused the magistrates of being politically motivated and when he came to power made it harder for them to arrest and imprison people suspected of corruption. The government also sent in investigators to investigate the magistrates 
looking for irregularities which were never found. The leading magistrate, Antonio Di Pietro, found it impossible to continue and ultimately launched his own political party, thus enabling Berlusconi to say it proved that it had been all about politics all the time. In the end, the investigations petered out, and although the old political parties were swept away, nothing really changed. Forza Italia remains a key player in Italian politics. Silvio Berlusconi served two further terms as Prime Minister for a total of eight years and became an ally, if not friend, of British Prime Minister Tony Blair and welcome guest of US presidents. He has also been involved in all sorts of allegations about so-called bunga bunga parties with young women and paying people not to give evidence. I have no idea whether they are true, but I regret that they make Berlusconi appear to be some sort of buffoon when in fact he has been a devastatingly effective politician who prevented meaningful change in Italian politics. As I record this, Silvio Berlusconi, aged 86, is in intensive care, suffering from diabetes and leukaemia, but continues to lead Forza Italia. I wish him and his family well. He was quite a man. I hope you found this video interesting. If you would like to see more, please do subscribe and click the like button.